Hi everyone. This video is about the Fiedler Audio Mastering Console application that we have created for conveniently editing and mastering Dolby Atmos ADM BWF files without the need to fire up your DAW. It has the same features as the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin, except, of course, there is no connectivity to the Beam or Spacelab plugins. You can even run this application alongside your DAW if you so desire. By the way, if you own the Dolby Atmos Composer, the Mastering Console is free for you. After opening the Mastering Console, you'll first need to import an ADM BWF file to use it, so let's do that now. Now, we see the options page, but let's start at the beginning and switch over to monitoring. On the left, you can see all 128 possible Dolby Atmos channels, both used and unused. The bed channels are shown in orange, while the dynamic objects appear in blue. On the right side, you'll find the monitoring controls. There you can adjust the volume, dim the playback, and mute both beds and objects either separately or together. The mastering console can give you two monitoring outputs simultaneously. One is the output to your speaker system if you have one, and the other is the output for headphones. Below the monitoring controls, you'll find the drop-down menu where you can select the format for monitoring through the speakers. The meters will adjust accordingly. Below the meters, you'll find the drop-down menus for the headphones format and for your personalized HRTF file in case you have one. Please refer to the manual to learn about the folder where you'll need to place this file. And last but not least, there is the extensive audio device setup. On this page, you can select the audio device and adjust various settings for it. Depending on the sample rate of your ADM file, you'll need to select either 96 kHz, preferably with a 1024 sample buffer, or 48 kHz, preferably with a 512 sample buffer. If you load an ADM file that doesn't have the same sample rate that is currently set for your audio device, an error will be shown, and you'll have to adjust the sample rate here before being able to actually work on your imported file. Below the basic device settings, we have the routing settings on the left. By default, the preset for headphones is loaded, where the headphone channels are routed to outputs 1 and 2. There are a lot of different presets with useful settings. You can also create your own presets and save them for later use if you like. If you accidentally forget to save your settings as a preset and close the app, not to worry. The settings from the last session will be restored when opening the mastering console again, so you can save them then if you want. Now let's check out how this works in detail. The list you see contains all possible channels at the output of the Dolby Atmos rendering algorithm. You can use the drop-down menus to decide which output of your audio device will receive each Atmos channel. Let's say you have a 9.1.6 speaker setup and you choose the preset labeled 9.1.6 with headphones. Now, what we can see here is that the 16 channels of the 9.1.6 layout are routed to outputs 1 through 16 of our audio device. That part is clear. Next, we see that the left surround and right surround for 5.1.x layouts are routed to outputs 5 and 6. This is where our side speakers are already routed. The preset has been set in this way so that you can listen to your 5.1.x layouts on your 9.1.6 setup, and you can check how a down mix of your Atmos mix will sound. In that case, the surround channels of the 5.1.x monitoring format will be routed to the side surround speakers of your 9.1.6 setup. This means you can practically choose any listening format on the monitoring page and the speakers of the selected format will automatically be routed to the correct speakers of your setup. On the bottom of the list, we see that the headphones are routed to channel 17 and 18, which lets you have headphones connected and working in parallel to your speaker monitoring system. To the right of the routing section, you'll find the tuning section where you can set a volume, a delay time, and an EQ curve for each and every channel except for the headphones. By default, this section is turned off for performance reasons, but if you need to use it for your speaker calibration, you can switch it on and start tweaking. As you can see, there is a preset loaded called flat, where all EQs are set flat, the volumes are set at zero decibels, and the delay times are set at zero milliseconds. A tuning preset always contains all tuning settings for all channels. When tuning is switched on, you can select a channel in the routing section 
and the tuning parameters for that channel become accessible. Now you can set the volume, delay time, and EQ curve for that channel. To help you measure your speakers, we have included a signal generator on the bottom. Here you can select different test signals such as pink noise, different sine wave tones, a transient thumping sound, and a sine sweep in case you want to generate an impulse response from which an entire frequency curve can be generated. For generating an impulse response, you'll need additional equipment and software as this function is not part of the mixing console. The buttons on the right side below the EQ let you reset the EQ with one click or copy and paste the EQ settings from one channel to another. Again, the tuning settings will also be saved upon closing the mastering console and restored the next time you open the mastering console. You can also save the tuning settings to presets and thus have different tunings at hand when you need to switch between studios. Now let's close the audio device setup and have a look at the channel configuration page. In the list of the bed and object channels shown here, you can change the binaural mode, description and group of each of these channels. Again, bed channels are marked in orange while object channels appear in blue. Now let's head over to the master channel. The master channel sits directly before the Dolby Atmos renderer. So the channels of the Dolby Atmos file first pass through the module chain in the master channel before being leveled by the master gain parameter and entering the renderer where the rest happens. At the top of the master channel, we find buttons for adding, removing and reordering modules as well as a preset section. Here you can save and load entire module chains, which can really speed up your workflow. And by the way, those presets can also be loaded into the module chain of the Dolby Atmos Composer and vice versa. Let's add our first module to process the mix. What we're doing here is just like putting a plugin on the master track of your DAW. Currently, the only module available in the mastering console is Gravitas MDS. Gravitas MDS is a high-end mastering compressor capable of processing all 128 channels of your Atmos mix if you like. But you don't have to use it on everything. You can use it to just process certain channels of your mix, or even let some channels trigger the processing for another group of channels. You can also set Gravitas to work as a limiter to avoid nasty peaks. It's very flexible. Once a module is added, it is automatically given a name, which of course you can customize to whatever you like. Let's do that now. Next to the name field, we have buttons for opening the module editor and for bypassing and deactivating the module. Let's open the editor for Gravitas. Now, we won't go into detail here because we have three separate tutorial videos describing all functions of Gravitas. That said, there are a few things worth mentioning about the module version of Gravitas, since it is slightly different to the plugin version. The first thing is the input configuration dialog. If you compare the plugin version of Gravitas to the module version, you'll notice that the input configuration dialog actually indicates what channel is what in your Atmos mix. We can see the bed channels with their designations, and when we scroll to the right, we see the object channels. In this dialog, you can freely select which channels will influence compression or expansion and which channels will actually be compressed or expanded. The functions of the different elements in this dialog are explained in detail in the corresponding Gravitas tutorial, so please have a look there to learn more about the input configuration. There's a link in the description. Now let's close this dialog and have a look at the section in the processing module where the LFE level knob is located. When Gravitas is loaded as a module for processing an ADM BWF file, a display is shown next to the LFE level knob. With the controls there, we can step through the LFE channels of the different beds in the file and adjust their output volumes. Now let's close Gravitas. Below the modules list, you'll find the master gain knob with which you can adjust the volume of all channels. This is a super quick way to adjust your Atmos mix to meet the requirements of distributors. And to help make sure you meet those requirements, we have a loudness measurement section. You can select the format for loudness measurement and then measure by either playing back the loaded ADM BWF file or by clicking the measure ADM button to do it at maximum speed. Now let's head over to the options page. 
On this page, you can adjust the settings for down mix, trim, and balance values, as well as change the timecode start. The two down mix settings determine the algorithm by which your mix will be down mixed to certain speaker layouts. The first drop down menu lets you choose the algorithm for down mixing from 5.1 to stereo, while the second sets the algorithm used when down mixing from 7.x to 5.1 and 5.1.x. To know what exactly these algorithms do, please refer to the user manual. Below that, we find the controls to set trim and balance values for different speaker layouts. The drop-down menu lets you select which of these layouts you'll be editing. If automatic is switched on, these values are set internally and the knobs are grayed out. If automatic is switched off, the knobs become available for manual adjustment. The trim knobs show attenuation values in decibels. One knob sets the attenuation for the surround speakers, while the other sets the attenuation for the speakers in the upper plane or height speakers. The associated surround and height speakers are attenuated by the same values set here. The balance values are in percent and determine the front-back balancing ratio. This applies to both the ear level listening plane and the overhead height plane. Positive values emphasize the front, while negative values emphasize the back. At the right, there's a Groups list field where you can see the groups used in your ADM BWF file, and here you can make changes to those groups. Note that if you delete a group, all channels that were previously assigned to that group will now become unassigned. And last but not least, you can select the format to which you want to export your edited and mastered ADM BWF file. By default, ADM BWF is selected, but you can also export to the selected monitoring layouts simultaneously. This is called a re-render. If you want, you can have this re-render export be one multi-channel file or a set of mono files. Once everything is set, all that's left to do is hit the big export button Select the file name and click Save to export at maximum speed. After unloading the ADM BWF file, the mastering console goes back to its initial state. You can now load another ADM BWF file to work on a different project. And that's it for this one, folks. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss any news, tips, and updates. There's more to come, and I will see you in the next one.